everyone. Hope you're having a great morning. Uh, my name is Ali Asad Hassan. I'm a business development manager in our IoT public sector partner organization uh, with Amazon Web Services. So show of hands, everyone knows who Amazon is? Hopefully, all right. Outside your front door, <laughs> everyone, every morning. <laughs> uh, everyone knows who Amazon Web Services is? All right, hopefully that too, good. Because usually that sometimes you do, sometimes you don't, right? Uh, but yeah, basically, Amazon Web Services, the cloud division of Amazon, right, kind of came out of the Amazon infrastructure, providing IT services uh, on a pay-as-you-go model uh, like a utility, right, as needed. So here, let's see if this works for me. Nope. There you go. So at AWS, we start all of our conversations, and especially all of our IoT conversations, with a simple question, similar to what Mike was saying, right? Forget the technology, forget everything you're talk, gonna talk about, just let's focus on if you knew the state of everything out there, by thing I mean every sensor, every data point, every application, everything that exists, if you knew the state of that and the data you get from it and could reason on top of that data, what problems would you solve, right? That's where we wanna work backwards. Amazon has a concept of working backwards from our customers so we understand what are the missions our customers are on, what are the problems they're trying to solve, and then we'll work backwards and understand, all right, now what technology do we apply to solve these problems? So similarly in IoT, we want to understand if we had all the data in the world, how we connected, where we got it in, forget all that. What would we solve, right? And that's how we want to, I want you to keep that in mind as we're going through this. Typically, when we've had these conversations, that trickles down to three main areas of focus. Now, again, every vertical is different, every discussion is different, but it comes down to three main things. One, almost everyone wants to grow their revenue stream, right? Whether it's by adding more revenue to the same product lines um, or adding more services, new lines of services, new revenue, anything that can move your bottom line go up. The second is, how do I apply data technology to reduce my cost? This means basically getting sensors, data deployed so I can understand my business. I can apply efficiencies in my process, whether it's manufacturing, right? Can I do machine automation? Whether it's utilities, whether it's traffic management. I, like Mike, I also cover public sector, so I'm dealing with smart cities, traffic systems and stuff. The bottom line is, how do I reduce my costs? How do I improve my efficiency? The third is no business, no city, no county, no one likes uh, unexpected risks. Right. What, do I, what can I do, how can I harness data to reduce or predict uh, any sort of risk? Right? So the idea is if there's methods of predictive maintenance, predictive alerting, if I can use any of those methodologies to reduce risk or predict risk, then that helps me get to my bottom line, which was to grow revenue and reduce cost. Right? So typically those are the three things we see, um, how data is being used at the bottom line we're trying to get to. That may be a little different for cities. Cities are more focused as you all know, in citizen experiences. But again, cities are also trying to improve the revenue through different services they extend. Um, so like I mentioned, we have a ton of customers in the IoT space. Um, what are they doing with IoT, right? So if you look across the board, everything from industrial automation, we have companies like Volkswagen that have deployed digital clouds. We have a Fender, we have carrier manufacturers that are using AWS IoT services in their assembly lines, in their factory floors to optimize, digitize their environments. Um, we have companies like Philips that are creating their health service digital suite platforms and leveraging AWS IoT to connect all their disparate healthcare systems and get visibility into that, get data, and provide healthcare services. So across the board, whether it's energy, public safety, utilities, IoT has a role to play in all these different verticals, right? even in the agriculture space. But IoT can be challenging. And the reason I say that is because I'm not a developer. I've actually never developed. But we've spoken to enough developers to understand that, A, developing an application itself is challenging. Right? There's a lot of things you have to think through, the web layer, the application layer, the protocols, and everything. But then when you bring in this hardware environment where I'm saying, hey, let's take thousands and millions of sensors, let's connect them all. First of all, were they ready to be connected? What language do they speak? Can I do protocol translation effectively? Can I bring all that data in seamlessly? Do I have the right network to do all that, right? So a developer now has to step outside their traditional software uh, development skill set and now focus on connecting all these hardwares, 
right? And everyone in the room hopefully has experience, but there's a lot of uh, customers out there that don't have experience with that. And sometimes it's a bit of a challenge. It's critical, but it's an ex additional challenge, right? On top of that, you have to go focus on the four key areas that you're still trying to deliver with your new services and products, right? First of all, an IoT solution needs to create some sort of business value for you. If it's not creating any business value, it's just a POC. It's just a fun project you got to do, but you don't get beyond that. Actually, Cisco came out with a st stat that said over 70% of IoT projects tend to fail because that journey from a POC to a product um, is, doesn't go through just because the ROI wasn't clearly defined, right? So you still have to identify the idea and the business value behind it. Second, you need to come up with a solution that is flexible, flexible to different sensors, flexible to different environments, different network connectivity, but then also extremely scalable, right? Because your POC might be 10, 20, 100 devices, and it works great, but then what happens when you get to 100,000, 10,000, millions of um, edge devices, right? It needs to scale as effectively. Security has to be core. It has to be th a thought process from the beginning and throughout the entire development process. So as you're thinking of solutions, ideas, technologies, right, security is key, cybersecurity, edge security, and you need to make sure it's embedded into all of those things. And then the pace of change, right? If, suppose we do get to this pace where we build this amazing solution, amazing product, but then the environment around us is changing rapidly. How does your application, how does your solution keep pace with that change, right? Think about the skill set, think about the technologies, think about the cost it would take to maintain and upgrade and all those things, right? So all of these challenges are being met by all of our customers on a regular basis. When we think of IoT and these challenges and how to apply this, what, the first thing we did is let's not look at this from a linear perspective, right? Typically, when we looked, thought of IoT initially, the idea was, hey, sensors down there that connect to some edge devices, they extract the data, you bring it into an application layer, you visualize it, you're going to get value from it, great, we're done, right? Not really. When AWS thinks of IoT, we kind of think of this in a virtuous cycle. It's a loop, right? The idea is on the bottom, uh, we want to be able to collect all the data from these sensors, move it through to the cloud, analyze this data, get some insights, get some learnings, and then trickle all that information right back to the sensor level, right, and act upon that and see if we can tweak the sensors and collect more data and keep going on and on until we're getting to the core, which is business outcomes. Right? So the idea is let's not just do it one way and call it the job well done. Let's continue to iterate on it. Let's continue to innovate on it. And this is a method methodology that AWS applies across all our different product lines. Right? And when we built our stack of AWS IoT services, we kept that in mind. So the idea was we have a core set of services uh, a full stack, everything from the edge to the cloud, and it's all designed to sort of interoperate with each other, and it's designed to sort of collaborate and share uh, information with each other to reach the intelligent outcomes in the middle. So I'm gonna spend a little time on this slide and talk through some of these capabilities, right? So if you're a builder, whatever you are in the IoT stack, right, we tend to provide purpose-built services to help you in your core mission. If you look at the far left, there's device software layer, where basically we have different set of services that can help you at the device level. So if you're an embedded manufacturer, if you're a sensor manufacturer, right, we have services like free real-time operating services, free RTOS. Uh, we actually just recently launched something called IoT Express Link. Dave is sitting out there. You can reach out to him anytime. He's an expert on it. Uh, Express Link is basically connectivity software that we have partners like Ublocks and Infineon are betting into their module chips and basically embedding them into the devices themselves, right? So the idea is if you want to quickly connect to the cloud, within 10 lines of code, just by using IoT Express Link, your device can be connected to the AWS cloud. So we're trying to take away that undifferentiated work away and making you focus on your core competency. We have something called Greengrass, which is basically an edge compute runtime environment. So if you have in, uh, edge gateways in your environment, microprocessors, you can run Greengrass on there and do some localized decision making, you can run machine learning inferences. Uh, we have a set of services in the cloud to do machine learning. You can push all those down to the edge and now do localized machine learning right at the edge. And then moving along that virtuous cycle, when we get to the cloud portion, IoT Core is the backbone of the IoT infrastructure at AWS. So everything that connects comes back to the IoT Core in the cloud and that's where we ingest all the data, that's where we control all the devices, we do the fleet management, device management, security, everything from that central service in the middle. All right. 
Um, and then moving further up, now that we have the data where it needs to sit, how do we get visualization analysis from that, right? So we have a set of services up there, everything from IoT events, analytics, to be able to look at that data, analyze it, get insights to, to higher level services like SiteWise. SiteWise is built primarily for industrial environments. The idea is if you have industrial environments with heavy machinery, CNC machines, how can you in one managed service connect to those machines, collect that data, visualize it, and then build predictive maintenance models and uh, equipment monitoring models and stuff, and machine learning all in a single service, right? So really useful over there. And then I'll talk a little bit more about the digital twin service we recently launched. And then all of that feeds right back down to IoT Express Link and FreeRTOS to say, all right, this is how we can improve this entire cycle. So it's a continuous cycle, like I mentioned, focus on the outcomes. All right, so this slide got a little messed up. I was afraid of this. But anyways, uh, hopefully we can get a better slide in your hands later on. But the idea is we have a ton of partners and customers that are using these services across the board, globally, at scale. Right? So when you look at some of these logos, I talked about Philips, um, iRobot, those robots that are running around our homes, right? hundreds of millions of devices all connected using AWS IoT right? at scale. Um, we have partners like NL Energy Companies back in, uh, in France. Uh, Charity Water, very interesting. They have a massive deployment in India where they have um, water pumps in remote villages. And the, uh, the cost to send someone out there to monitor the condition of these pumps is significantly higher, and the logistics and the challenges. So they're using AWS IoT to just remotely connect all these pumps and get visibility and manage the entire fleet, right? And the idea over here is not to say that, hey, look, look at all the partners that are using this. That's great. The idea is that none of these partners or customers are in the IoT business themselves, right? They have a core competency. Charity Water is in the business of providing water pumps for locations that need them, right? Philips is in healthcare business. IoT is something they do to provide those services. So it's a lot of undifferentiated work that these companies would have to do on their own, which they decided were better off partnering with AWS and let AWS do the undifferentiated work while we can focus on our core competency, right? And that helps them to free up resources, to innovate, scale, and going back to my original slide, grow new streams of revenue. So that's what we tell our customers, help us help you focus on your core competency. Um, one of our biggest customers is us. Um, Amazon, as you know, has over 200 facilities uh, with massive robotics um, in the fulfillment centers. Um, we have about half a million robotic units, drive units. Those are the Kivo uh, devices that pick up all those dish shelves in the warehouse and move them around, all centrally controlled. Um, and then we've shipped over hundreds of millions of Alexa devices right, in different households and stuff. All of these in the back are leveraging AWS IoT. And all the services that come out, they test them, they run them. So before we even launch a service, there's a good chance we've thoroughly scaled and tested them internally in our environments, and they're ready for production grade in your environments as well. Um, the last one I want to mention is, this is kind of exciting. I think Mike mentioned Digital Twins as well. Digital Twins has been a thing which has been talked about for a while, right? And it's, it's kind of like smart cities, a lot of talk, a lot of hype, but people are waiting for this to become a reality. We feel we're at that point where a lot of industries are now actually looking at Digital Twin and saying, how do we actually build these, right? So we wanted to come in and provide a service called Twin Maker, which helps you build Digital Twins. It's not a Digital Twin service itself. The idea is if you're looking to create your own Digital Twin service offering, you can take Twin Maker and help you do the core fundamental work, right? The and you can basically leverage all your different assets, whether they're machine assets, sensors, or whether they're um, different databases, applications that you have, right? Ingest all that data, uh, collect it, model it through machine learning, and then visualize it into a single platform, right? And it's not, a one, again, not a one-way thing. You can interact with these devices to say, if a, if a CNC machine is not working, it'll turn red in the digital twin space. You can interact, you can fine tune it, you can push down firmware updates and everything, right? So really new, exciting service focused on four primary areas, manufacturing, smart buildings, power utilities, and energy, pretty much contained environments, right? The idea is if you're in that space, we would love to work with you and understand how can we take the application beyond just uh, bars and charts into actual 3D visualization. So I wanted to mention a case study. Um, 
we work with the city of Detroit. There's a company called Maya Vision. They're a partner of ours. They do traffic management. And uh, Detroit has, I think, over 800 traffic signals. And they have a small team, IT team, managing this, about, I think, 50 people. And they would constantly run into issues where these traffic signals kept going down. And every time a traffic signal went down, the round time to deploy someone to go out there, fix it, well, first of all, analyze what the issue is, fix it, and the traffic congestion and everything, that would take about eight hours. So imagine the impact on citizen engagement, on um, customer satisfaction, just by doing that, right? Um, they work with a partner of ours, MyoVision, that leverages the IoT stack. They have a solution with cameras or the traffic signals, and then edge computer the traffic uh, cabinets. And basically, these cameras will do monitoring, and they'll give you the status of all these um, uh, traffic signals, right? So that reduced their downtime from eight hours to two hours. So significant impact for the city across the board. And the team of 50 was now able to scale across and efficiently manage all these different traffic signals. The other thing it allowed them to do is move beyond that. Now they've deployed technology at the edge and connected all those traffic signals. They said, now we don't just need to monitor these signals. Let's actually see if we can do traffic behaviors, right? See if we can do predict predictions around um, accidents and stuff like that, crowd um, sourcing and stuff. Um, so a lot of different ideas that the city started looking at just by connecting all these assets and leveraging a partner that had built a solution, leveraging AWS IoT. Another quick story is uh, another partner in the utility space. There's a company called Subeka. What they do is they build, let me just build this slide up. They build um, water utility meters. Think of it like a Nest thermostat for your home, for energy, similarly for your water. Right? And the idea is this goes in the outside connection point where your city comes in. They work with utilities. And from an app, you can now monitor the status of how much water you're consuming right, in your own residential environment. So it's a pretty cool service. And they had all these deployed across different cities, leveraging a LoRaWAN infrastructure. And they had a third-party LoRaWAN network server they were using. They switched to AWS IoT Core for LoRaWAN. And they saw significant improvements because, again, their core competency was not connecting devices. It was more about creating the value from measuring the water and stuff right, for the customers. Uh, so they saw over 90% reduction in their costs just by switching the undifferentiated work to AWS and focusing back on their core competency. So to wrap up, how would you engage with AWS to do some of these things in your environments, right? Like, it's great to get up on a stage and talk, but where does rubber meet the road, right? Where do we do stuff together? So I, like I mentioned in the beginning, we have a lot of, there's a stat from Cisco that says over 70% of POCs tend to fail, right? We are trying to bridge that gap and reduce that number. We're trying to see if partners and customers can take their ideas, their concepts, and move them to reality. So we create, came up with this program called Rapid Adoption Assistance for Partners. The program is focused on IoT, AI ML services, and also containers. And the idea is if you have a project, whether it's a POC, a sandbox project you want to do in your own environment, a new feature creation, or it's a customer you're engaged with, right, pilot, and you want to figure out how to leverage AWS IoT services, we have an external page. We can share the link. You just come in, fill out the form, and our teams get engaged with you. And we basically go through three phases. One is envisioning, which is a simple discovery. Let's sit down and figure out what is the project, what problems are you trying to solve, work backwards. Second is enablement, right? If you have the skill set and the training and the resources, great. If you don't, we'll provide all that to you. So we'll do workshops, we'll do demonstrations, we'll do labs, whatever it takes to get your team spun up with these services. And then we move to the build phase, which is great. Now let's actually build something together. Right? Let's actually get something tangible in our hands to say, this is what we did. All of this at no cost to you. Right? So there's no fee, there's no fee cost at all. This is just something we want to do to help our partners build and grow. Uh, so pretty cool service worth looking into. The other thing we do is our go-to-market primarily is direct, but then also heavily through our partners, right? So we have, in AWS IoT, we have a vast ecosystem of partners that goes from edge to outcome. So let me actually just build this out. So we have partners across the entire spectrum, from silicon to OEM and ODMs, gateway manufacturers, network carriers, industry solutions and stuff, and we list all of them in... Um, in an external page, but then we also have a marketplace where you can go just go procure solutions from these partners. So a lot of different offerings that are available through partners. And then the other thing we do is, if you have a device 
edge gateway, a sensor that's built on AWS IoT, or you want to get it qualified, we can get it qualified through our system, and then we list it in our catalog. So just like anyone would go to Amazon.com to buy toilet paper roll, a toothbrush, a toothpaste, you can now go to the AWS Partner Device Catalog and basically, or Marketplace, and find software that's IoT compliant, find devices that are AWS IoT compliant, and just either procure directly from them or push them to your website, right? So a massive marketplace to start um, leveraging to scale your solutions as well. So I'm going to wrap up with that, um, but go back to the same question, right? If you had the help of AWS IoT to provide you a set of services that could get you to a point where you get all the data you need and all the reason information you need on top of that, again, what problems would you solve? Right? That's, I think, what we need to come back to. So if you have challenges, issues, get in touch, let us know, and we'd love to collaborate and see if we can help. That's it. Thank you.